I'm Harley Smith, and this is the Master Growers Course. And today we're going to be doing Introduction to Hydroponics. We're going to be covering the basics of hydroponic growing. I'm going to show you everything you need to know to be successful with hydroponics, even if you've never done it before. Plants are autotrophic. That means they're self-feeders. They make their own food. They take in carbon dioxide through the leaves. They take up water through the roots. And then in the presence of full spectrum light, they make their own sugars. They make carbohydrates to grow and reproduce. So when you're doing hydroponics, the first thing to look at is the environment. Just give them a simple environment with full spectrum light. Uh, during the vegetative growth stage, they prefer the blue end of the spectrum. So choose horticultural grow lights with extra blue, like the T5 lights for vegetative growth. During the fruiting and flowering, plants prefer the red end of the spectrum. So choose a horticultural grow light that has more reds and far reds. You start with a strong, healthy, vigorous plants and then get a bumper crop of fruit and flowers. Also make sure you have at least a little bit of air movement. Just an oscillating fan is all it takes. A nice light breeze so that all the leaves in your garden are moving just a little bit. And watch your relative humidity. Keep it between about 40 and 60%, just comfortable for the plant so the plant can take up water and minerals easily without wilting. Okay, now once you provide the environment for your plants, indoor growing, now you need to provide the right nutrients. Plants need 17 essential elements to grow and reproduce. Three of them come from carbon dioxide and water. Those are covered. The other 14 essential elements are minerals. Those are the fertilizers that you add to the roots. Now in hydroponics, you start with the grow formula during the vegetative growth stage, and then at the bloom time, you take out the grow formula and put in a bloom formula that has more phosphates and potassium. So both of them, grow formulas or bloom formulas, have all of the essential elements that plants need, the ones that are normally come from soil or from organic matter. Well, in hydroponics, all of the minerals are there in water-soluble form, immediately available to the plant. So a grow formula for vegetative growth has all of the essential elements, but a little bit more nitrogen to help the growth of the plant. The bloom formula has all of the essential elements, but a little more phosphorus and potassium for earlier flowering, more flowering sites, stronger and better yields. So in hydroponics, think of it as creating the perfect soil, but not just the perfect soil, the perfect soil for each stage of the plant's growth. Now, once you have your grow formula and your bloom formula, you have to also think about the strength of the nutrients. Is it very concentrated or is it very weak? Well, during the vegetative growth stage, plants want a very mild nutrient, maybe a half-strength nutrient. Would you feed a baby the same thing you feed an adult? What would happen if you gave a baby a piece of steak? It would choke. The same thing for plants. If you have a young vegetative growth plant and you give them a full strength hydroponic nutrient, you're gonna choke the plant. The same way steak would choke the baby. It actually restricts the uptake of water and nutrients. So start with a nice mild nutrient, usually about half strength or even quarter strength. And that's one of the biggest mistakes that beginners make, over fertilizing. They look at the label. It says two teaspoons per gallon. Well, they think, well, if two teaspoons is good, four teaspoons must be twice as good. Not so. If you give it that double formula, it restricts the vegetative growth stage. The plant doesn't grow. And then you look at it and say, oh, maybe it needs more fertilizer. Before you know it, you've killed your plant. So don't make that mistake. It's a common mistake. If the bottle says two teaspoons per gallon, Make it one and a half or even one teaspoon per gallon. It'll actually stimulate the uptake of water and minerals, grow healthier plants. Now during the fruiting and flowering stage though, now you have mature plants. You can give them a full strength bloom nutrient with all the elements they need. Even a little extra, if you do a little bit at a time. 
It'll exercise the plant. The football player, the weightlifter, not only can eat steak, they can eat an extra steak because they're exercising. So if you do it little by little, creating healthy stress on the plant, you're going to get the best of the best of quality. Now, how do we manage that nutrient? How do we manage the strength of the nutrients? We do it with a special tool called an EC meter. EC stands for electrical conductivity. Pure water, distilled water, doesn't conduct electricity. It has an EC of about zero. But the more mineral ions that are in the water or that we add to the water as hydroponic nutrients, the more it conducts electricity. So the more fertilizers you add to the water, the higher the EC. But it takes out all the guesswork. You don't have to look at the plant and say, does it need more water? Does it need more fertilizer? You just test the EC until it reaches its target. So during the vegetative growth stage, you want a low to medium EC for a nice mild nutrient. If full strength is an EC of 1.8 or 2.0, sometimes they'll tell you right on the bottle what full strength is. Reduce that. Go somewhere between 1.0 and 1.6. I never go to full strength nutrient anytime during vegetative growth. So start nice and low, maybe 1.2, maintain it for a while, and then as they start growing, becoming more vigorous, slowly increase your EC. Now, during the fruiting and flowering stage, high EC, full strength, or a little extra. It'll restrict the uptake of water a little bit, but it, under stress, the plants will make antioxidants to improve themselves or to protect themselves from the stress. They make colors. Those are antioxidants, like the anthocyanins, the purple pigments. They make colors, they make aromas, they make flavonoids. So if you want to improve the quality, be the football player. Give them a little bit extra, but give them what they need. Maybe even add a potassium supplement. We'll talk more about spoon feeding, giving the plant exactly what it needs when it needs it in future classes. But for now, you don't need to know all that. Just know that you start with a grow formula, nice and mild, finish with a bloom formula, full strength or a little bit extra. Now, there's one more thing that plants need to use the minerals that you gave them in your hydroponic nutrient. pH. Control the pH. pH is a measurement of acidity or alkalinity of a substance or of a solution. Now, what do you think plants need during their growth? Do you think they would rather have slightly alkaline conditions or slightly acid conditions? The answer is slightly acidic. Neutral water is about 7 pH. Any number below 7 is slightly acidic. Plants prefer a pH of somewhere between about 5.8 or 6.4 on the pH scale. So, put in your water, in your reservoir, fill it up, put in your nutrients until you hit your, your EC, your target for that stage of the plant's growth, and then afterwards adjust the pH. If the pH is too high, say above 6.5, add a little pH down. It's too high, bring it down. It's a mild phosphoric acid. It's, uh, it'll lower the pH very easily. Remember, water isn't a buffer for pH. It's easy to change it, so just add a little bit. And my tip for you beginners too is add little by little at first. Don't overshoot. Oh, I went too far down. Now I got to add pH up. Whoops, I went too far up. I got to add more pH down. Whoops. If you do that, you're better off just starting over again. Mix a fresh batch. But what would be better to do is add a little bit at a time mix it up, check your pH again with a pH test kit or a pH meter. We'll show you how to do that uh, until you reach your target. Now, every time you add a little bit, write down how much you added. The best growers are the best record keepers. So if you add just a little bit at a time, just 10 milliliters at a time or so of the pH down, keep track of it. The next time you do a reservoir change, you don't have to guess. You know almost exactly what you need to hit your target pH. So it's that simple. 
If you're going to be successful in hydroponics, start with a grow, finish with a bloom. Start with a mild nutrient during fruiting and flowering, raise the, the EC. Check your EC every day and adjust it as necessary. Check your pH every day, adjust it as necessary. If you change the reservoir too on schedule. You can't just keep adding minerals and adding water because plants take up different minerals at different rates. So it's easy if you follow the basics. Don't make it too hard at first. After you see what your plants can do in hydroponics, you'll be astonished. They have more flavor and aroma. You can grow the best of the best just with the basic nutrients. But as you go along, we'll show you in future classes how to make fine adjustments to your nutrients to get even better results in your garden from time to time. But keep it simple. If you add too many additives, even if you're successful, you don't know what did it. So now you know the basics. And it's a good place to start. Definitely start there. Get into the good habits we talked about today. pH, EC, change your reservoir on schedule. But that's not all. Come back to future classes. We're going to be getting into precision fertilizer management and a strategy of growing I call spoon feeding, where we give the plant exactly what it needs when it needs it. So we have our grow and our bloom base, but we can improve it to get improved quality and improved yield. We're also going to look at organic biostimulants. Those are very small organic molecules, biologically active molecules we can add to our nutrient formula, add to our base nutrient that improves the uptake of the water and minerals. The more efficiently plants take up those minerals from your hydroponic nutrient, the more chemical reactions they can do, the higher the bricks, the more stored sugars in the plant. If you can grow such high quality bricks that the bricks is at 12% or higher, sucking insects won't even recognize the plant as food. They won't even land on it. So we want to grow the healthiest plants that we can. And we'll show you how to do that in future classes. And every once in a while, nature does find a way. We're going to show you some things for integrated pest management to solve the problems and identify them using the most benign organic sprays and treatments possible. And again, we'll be looking at plant propagation. I'll show you how to make Changes to your nutrient specifically for mother plants. I'll show you how to, to get better results from seeds and for cuttings. So this is the beginning. You do the things we did today, you'll be successful. But come back to future classes and we'll take it to the next level. Thanks for coming. Hope to see you in future classes.